not just engaging in movies, it's engaging in movies in order to engage with your youth. So, loving movies can really, really help you build relationships with you. At least it has for me. Um, we all know we live in a culture that is completely saturated by multimedia. We're not going to change it. We can either turn into the guy from Two and a Half Men's and shake fingers at each other and shame you, shame people into not watching anything, or we can completely, bless you, um, consume it without even thinking about it. Both of these extremes, I feel, do not are not valid in helping us in, in properly lead our own lives, let alone model things for our youth. Um, our youth love to talk about movies, books, books, yes, books, <laughs> TV, video games, music, whatever. If it's media, they love to talk about it, and it can be our basically can be our common ground. Um, we can use this to build that relationship. Now, when I talk about movies, I interchange it a lot with TV, because I like TV as well. Please hear whatever form of media you prefer. If you like music, read that. If you like books, read that. Um, whatever I mean by whatever you take is your favorite form of media, use that. So I've been doing this for a little bit of a time. Um, I won't get into the how, but in order to just kind of have a framework for the the presentation, I just wanted to, I used an article that kind of took me through this. Uh, if you want the article name, let me know. Um, so basically when we're engaging with, with movies versus consuming it with it, we have to remember that we're being invited into a particular world, the world of the work, okay? We are, and that particular world is created from a worldview, something that that person believes and stands for and is trying to share with the rest of us. We're being invited in there. And what the, what, one of the quotes that I, oops, the paper. Yeah. One of the quotes that I saw was that when we are visiting that world, we're visiting it. We're being invited, we're visiting there. And it's not quite like our own, and we're being shown things through alien eyes. And because of that, we're going to change. No matter what, something in us changes. Even if just a little tiny bit, it will change. When we just sit there, we, allow, we consume that change without thinking, and we're not letting it happen. Also, once we're just consuming it, there's no real deep conversation that we can have with the kids beyond, yeah, I really like that. I can't believe they killed that, that character off. Or no, I can't. I hated how, you know, whatever that they hated or whatever you hated. What more can you do beyond that is if you, if you don't just engage with it versus consuming with it. Engaging in the worlds that, that, that are created, we become more aware of what they're being changed, how we're being changed and how they're being changed. And we can deny ourselves the enjoyment of interacting with this form of media and interacting with movies. We can get, deny it, but that's also not showing a good model for how to engage with our world around us. Movies are incredibly messy. The Walking Dead is a wonderful example of messiness. You have a loyal family man trying to protect his, his family and a group and ends up doing some crazy nutty things. Um, there are obviously movies are going to show idolatrous worldviews. They're going to put something above God. Obvious examples with this is sex, alcohol, and the plethora, and even personal, personal ambition. But what's funny about this is a lot of these things, as long as they're put in the proper place, doesn't necessarily make them idolatrous, right? And that's kind of how we engage. The article states that human beings are complex, they're conflicted, they are made, both made in the image of God and drawn irresistibly towards rebellion. And so our engagement with popular culture must be prepared to understand both the good and the bad, the truth and the truth twisting. When we look at, when we're engaging in themes, that's how we're doing this. So there's five simple ways we can kind of do this. We can, um, just basically five questions that we can ask. First off, most obvious, what is the story? What is this, this, this world moving towards? How does the characters, what's the plot? 
Also, where am I? The where are you in the world of the work? What are they doing there? What are you doing there? What, you know, this is where you're asking questions like, what counts as, as salvation? What counts as moral? With these two questions, if you decide to go a little bit deeper with this, you can actually start playing with how the directors are doing their thing. We were having a little bit of a conversation about that during uh, lunch, and I was getting very excited. Um, angles show a lot about this, the pace of the plot, and um, actors' focus are all very important with this. Another good question is, what is true? What is good and what is beautiful? So by doing this, we're helping to understand the world of the work more fully. And this is where we can start having those, those deeper conversations with the youth. When they bring up Transformers, they can, so you can talk about sacrifice. Or they may kind of roll your eyes at you and be like, oh, Peter again, really? And, but then they're going to come back at you and go, you know, I did notice that. And then now, they came back to you. Now you've had another relationship conversation. And it continues to roll, right? It's a continuous thing. Same with the fourth question. What is false, ugly, and perverse? So what are those idols trying to, to make you do? Same kind of a thing. The last question, I don't really play with as much as I probably should, um, is how does the gospel apply with the movie? Basically, how does it show that the idols that are pretending to try to say, these are what's going to give you great things, how are they actually provided by God's grace? Right? And that's where you can also go back to the kids and have conversation. This may sound like after a while, you're absolutely going to hate watching movies, and why do I have to dig in? And you know, why can't I just sit there and enjoy it? This is fun. <laughs> I love doing this with movies and digging and having a conversation and, and just analyzing it. it. It actually has increased my own movie experience because of it. Now we, I'm just going to share a couple of stories with you about how this has actually worked out in my group. Um, four stories. First off is the Transformer story. I had a kid who... I was having a really hard time connecting with him. He's also a high-functioning autistic boy, and I could not figure out how to connect with him. Found out that he's absolutely fixated on Transformers. So, not that I'm a huge Transformer fan, it's not that I'm not. I just started talking to him about Transformers. A couple of weeks ago, he went away for a weekend. He stopped by the church to give me a hug before he left. All right, now I'm connected with him. Okay, plus, his brother came back to me a couple months after we started really building our conversation. Brother comes back to me and says, you know, Deidre, he's talked to me about sacrifice inside of Transformers. Here's a kid who never talks and asks questions during the lessons. And that's what happened during um, Transformers. World War Z actually is a book that's turning into a movie. But it represents, for me, the, zomb the zombie genre, okay? Our entire group is involved with this. My obsession over how fascinating this genre is has turned into the entire group wanting to create webisodes for, on for, for YouTube, which means GIFs are going to be used. I've got a story writer. I've got, a st I've got somebody drawing a storyboard. Kid that likes makeup is going to get into makeup. Got a kid who loves technology who's editing. Now, our entire youth group is a team building a story. Thought that was kind of cool. Benedict Cumberbatch is my next one. Benedict Cumberbatch is incredibly attractive to me. This might sound counterintuitive to tell a youth group. I couldn't figure out how to broach the subject of, you can talk to me about the opposite sex, ladies. It's okay. Couldn't figure out how. As soon as I told them that he was attractive, now I've had some serious sex talks with the girls. Just because I said, he's hot. <laughs> it just worked. It, I, made, I became approachable. <laughs> and I got to talk about him again. I mean, <laughs> um, <laughs> The Hunger Games. We've already talked about it several times today. We've talked about it. This one's the really simple one. 
The fact that I know that Jolene loves the Hunger Games, we play that game of guess who? Guess who I'm putting on her back? Katniss Everdeen. And she feels like I remember something about her, that she's special because I know that she loves Hunger Games. And as soon as I saw it, I texted her and I'm like, dude, I can't believe that haha, I beat you, I saw it before you. Because it was a pop show that I was in line for seven hours for. Um, that's a different story. But yeah, it helps you engage with the kids on a conversational level, that you become approachable. And you're modeling something that goes beyond just consuming the world that we're inside of. You get to have a little bit of fun with the things that you enjoy and, and share that with them. Become more approachable. So go out there and have some fun. Engage with the movies that you're watching beyond just sitting there and share it with them.